Okay, so we're going to learn, uh, we're going to come together today uh, in the portion of uh, Mikates, but we're going to actually have the class today is on the holiday of Hanukkah. That's what it, it, the class is about. It's a beautiful concept uh, based on an aspect in Jewish law, which um, uh, uh, connects the uh, what we mentioned last week, the Shabbos. Uh, the, we mentioned uh, the class last week was the concept of Shabbos. Over here, it connects the Hanukkah to the concept of Shabbos in Jewish law. And uh, the, the class is about the concept of bringing peace to the world. We all know that we need to have peace in the world. And um, we need to, uh, we need to, not not Yigash, but we need to bring about peace in the world. And uh, that's what the class is called, introducing peace to a fractured world. What did the Abish, what did the Tater really wanted in the aspect of peace in the world? So um, let's go to text number one, which uh, which uh, which says as follows, brings down a, a concept in, in Maimonides, a Jewish law. Um, we cannot imagine this law today uh, because it's an interesting law and we should never uh, have this problem. Baruch Hashem, most people don't have the problem because you have Chabad and we'll give you it for free. But um, in Jewish law, there was times in history where things were very scarce. It was not something you could find every day, oil and candles and uh, et cetera. So the Gemara, the question is asked, if you had a choice between lighting up your home in honor of Shabbos or lighting the Hanukkah candles, this Shabbos, it came this Shabbos, and you don't have enough money for oil for Shabbos and oil for the, uh, 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 for the Hanukkah menorah, what do you like? What? So the loch is you light up the home, you get if you only have enough money for the candles of Shabbos or for the candles of Hanukkah, the law is you light the candles of Shabbos. So Shabbos pushes off the uh, Hanukkah menorah. And why? So Allah says, because the lighting of your house on, on Shabbos brings peace. That's the reason. Shabbos, the reason why we light the, the your Shabbos candles is because of peace in the house. Peace is the highest priority ever by the fact that God's own name is erased to create peace between a husband and wife, right? In the law of Sota, in the law of uh, Sota, the, the, the Torah says that when there's a struggle between a husband and wife, what does God say? I'm willing that you write God's name on, a, on, on a parchment, that you dip it into water, it erases God's name, etc. So you're not allowed to erase God's name in any, any aspect in Jewish law. You know, you have to, to, to bury it. You have to, uh, but here God says, I allow you to, to erase my name for the sake of peace. So we see that peace trumps everything. Are we not, the, the expression, God couldn't find a better vessel than the vessel of peace. So therefore, again, in those days, going back to time, going back to, a little back in history with this law with the Maimonides, in those days, a thousand years ago, there was no electricity, right? So what gave the light in the house was light, candles, right? If you were poor, candles, right? If you were poor, it came at night, your house was posh and dark. That's it. Came at night, maybe that's uh, he went to sleep because the house was dark. Simple as that. David just says, I, 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 you can live a whole week in the dark. On Shabbos, you need to have light in the house. You got to light Shabbos candles. It's a mitzvah. It's not a mitzvah to light Shabbos candles on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Live in the dark. On Shabbos, I want to have some, uh, some people sitting down together at the table. I want to have some peace in the house. And therefore, you need to light the Shabbos candles. And therefore, if you have enough money to buy the candles or the manita, you buy the candles, and that's what you do the mitzvah. Peace is of primary importance for the entire Torah was given to deduce peace in the world. As it states, the ways are pleasant and all the paths are peaceful. Torah was given to bring peace between humans, bring peace in the world, and that's why it trumps over everything you said. It trumps over the Hanukkah menorah lighting. You you write. So therefore, 
The Gemara says, Rashi, in text number 2a, the Gemara says, we light candles on Shabbos because, fa- for, because the family would be distressed to sit in the dark because it's an obligation to sit down on Shabbos to a Shabbos meal. If you're going to have it in the dark, self understood, it would bring about unhappiness. So it's a rabbinical enactment, not only to light Shabbos candles, that's why on Shabbos and rabbinical, the rabbis enacted even furthermore. If we need peace, is not only peace in, 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 in the dining room, you should light a candle in every room. Yeah. You should be light in every room that we enter, that we enter on Shabbos to enable peace in the home so that people will not stumble on the wood or stone. The primary mitzvah to light candles near the dimmer table. That's with that because that's what we eat. But really, you should go a step further. Make a bracha on, on a, but there should be light in the house, light in the bathroom, and light in the kitchen, and light in the, in the bedroom. It should be lights. <laughs> they, used to, uh, they were more careful than us, okay? So that's an interesting thing. So the lights of Shabbos, there were no fire departments in those days, Baruch Hashem. So they didn't have any, 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 any uh, issues with the, uh... okay, Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem, life has changed. We have electricity. But we still light Shabbos candles because we still, because that's the mitzvah. The mitzvah is to light at least, and that's where we light it on next to the table or on the table. You light your Shabbos candle. So, but really, the mitzvah to light candles on Friday night was for the concept of peace. The aspect of the Menorah, self understood, has not, not, really seemingly nothing to do with that. You're actually not allowed to have any kind of pleasure from the light of the Menorah. You're not allowed to use it. You say it in Anayda Salalu. You're not allowed to enjoy the light of the Menorah. You're not allowed to use the light of the Menorah. You're not allowed to enjoy the. It's not made for that. It's not made for to bring peace in the house. It's not made to be, be able to see in the house. It's made for the mitzvah. That's it. Right? But also, he said, as I say, he said in the prayer, you're not, you're not allowed to use them. But to see it alone. That's it. That's the meaning. That's the purpose. End of story. And therefore, in text number three, it's brought down in Kitsch Shukhan one must fill the candles enough to oil to burn for 30 minutes after nightfall. During these 30 minutes, when the Hanukkah lights are, are, is an obligation, it's be, forbidden to benefit from the light. And that in a practical law would mean that you cannot turn all the lights in the household. Then you're going to be benefiting from the light, not to trip over something. So you just can't say, you know what, I'm going to make the menorah more nicer. I'll turn all my lights off. Can't do that. Because then you're going to be using the light. You're not allowed to do that in Torah law, in Jewish law. Okay? The lights are not to be used, but for its light, for the light of Menorah. You're not allowed to have any kind of benefits. So it's totally, seemingly, totally the opposite of the, of, of the Shabbos candles. The Shabbos candles was made that you should see, that people shouldn't, as we said, people shouldn't fall over something. While the Menorah was made for something totally different. The concept of the mitzvah, the concept of its light, and not to be used for personal gain, personal usage. So that's that, that's that's where you see the difference in the now. So the question is asked. So that's beautiful. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful lesson. And peace trumpets all. But the truth is, if you think about it, you're in essence saying peace between people is more important than a mitzvah between us and God. <laughs> right, right. That's interesting. So the meaning, in essence, I'm pushing off one thing for the other. Why would I push off one mitzvah for another? Where do I? What? Why? Why? Why does that? Why would I say such a thing? Really, the question is, why would I say such a thing? I mean, uh, and, and now you're valuing how much peace? Maybe uh, uh, let's say we're in peace, right? We're in peace. So, uh, and I have just the the menorah. Let's say I, I love my wife, and we're very happily married, and everything is wonderful. And uh, so, why would I push off the menorah? 
I have peace. I don't do. I don't have the, the, the Shabbos to bring peace. And Baruch Hashem, we're peaceful. So uh, why would I need the menorah? Why would I need the Shabbos? Why shouldn't I light the menorah? It's a mitzvah. Uh, it's the beauty of the candles is a mitzvah. God wants me to light candles. It's a mitzvah. So why would I push it off? That's really the question. Sages ask on this on this halacha. So the Rebbe says that the truth is every mitzvah is for peace. The whole Torah is about peace. Mitzvah is to bring peace, whether it's between peace with with each other, whether it's bring peace with us in the world, whether it's bring peace between us and God. It's all the concept of peace. So what is peace? What means peace? Peace means two things that are opposites. Two things, right? Unity. Two things that are that are that are that are maybe opposites, maybe are different, and we're gonna bring peace with them. We're gonna bring peace. Peace is, is something that you do between enemies. <laughs> if we right, if we, we, we don't need peace in a in a peaceful situation. Peace is when there's a, there's a conflict. We have peace. And how do you bring peace? How what is the ultimate concept of peace? Peace through might, usually nations. Bring peace through might, right? I'm I'm stronger than you, so therefore let's be peaceful. That's way the, that's the common uh, way of doing peace. I have the uh, right. Do you want to have peace between nations? We both have to have to. We both have to have a uh, atomic uh, power, right? So it's not, basically, we have peace because it's not worth to go to war. Really, we hate each other, and if we had a if we had the possibility to go to war with each other, we would. But you know what? It's probably not worth it. Why? Because I'll kill you, you'll kill me. So what, what, what are we going to gain out of this situation? And the point is to kill you. And I survive. So, so it's, it's, it's a peace through power. We don't like each other. And we see that in the world today, right? Because in general, we want peace. We want peace. The world wants peace. Baruch Hashem. There were times, you look in history, there were times there were 100, 200 wars going on in the world at a time. Baruch Hashem, the world has gotten better that we're, we're not, nobody likes war. 32. Okay, we're going down, coming down, coming down. Why? Because the world's against, against war. Listen, we created the United Nations officially to create an aspect of human understanding, peace. We don't want war. Everybody should live by their boundaries. Everybody should live in, 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 in respect of one another. We want that more. Peace, war is not something that, that humanity likes anymore, Baruch Hashem. Usually in the past, war was a day-to-day -day part of life. I, <laughs> okay, listen, we're not, we're not messianic times yet, so we have to have a war here and there. That's life. It's, it's the way it is. It's the way it is. It's, it's, it's almost it's part of humanity. Again, you, you have to go out to war with each other. It's only so, almost a mitzvah uh, to, to go out to war. With one another. Baruch Hashem, we've gotten to a better place. But the Abishtim brought to the world with giving the Torah was not a self is not a Jewish people. What the Abishtim brought to the world is how to be peaceful, how to have peace, how to not, not only not go out to war, but how to actually bring the concept of peace in the world. So, therefore, the Friedrich Rebbe writes in text number four, all mitzvahs are interconnected in a complete oneness. Our sages taught that one must never weigh one mitzvah, Torah mitzvah, against another. There's no war between one mitzvah and another mitzvah. You can't kind of look at it like that way. You shouldn't look at it as, as there's, a, there's a complication. We have a complication, and how do we come, how do we rectify this complication? That that you think there's a complication in your life is already not a good thing. That you, that you are a struggle, like the expression of Talmud. God doesn't ask somebody for something he cannot do. If the Abish asks you for something, he's not looking for complications. He's not looking for war. God is looking for war. Oh, I know humanity is not going to want to do it. So therefore, I'm going to ask him to do it. Now we're going to have a fight. She wants peace. God wants peace. That's why, in essence, 
God didn't want Ratz HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's the expression in, 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 in the Siddur. The Eivishter wanted to give merit. He didn't want to create havoc. He didn't want to create complications. He wanted to create merits. Merits. The Ratz HaKadosh Baruch Hu Lezaka is as Yisrael. God wanted to give merits to the Jewish people. Therefore, he gave them the trade. Therefore, he added them. You don't want to add a mitzvah. Okay, now let's have a complication. You can do it. You can do it. I don't want to do it. I'm struggling with it. Why? Why are you struggling with anything I asked you to do? I would say, you know, the difference between a person who you, you, you ask, when a person asks you, uh, can you, can you schlep? A bag of stones across the across the across the room, uh, across the across the. You know, can you stop this bag of stones? I'll give you half of it, right? Well, I don't want to stop a bag of stones. I don't want you half of stones. I don't want a half of it. I don't want any stones. But if he says, drag a bag of diamonds, same pound, same weight, and I'll give you half of it. Or I'll give it to you totally. You're gonna say, Ay vey. <laughs> You're going to say, hey, I don't want to do it. How far do you want to stop? Give me two bags. And pile it on. Why? Because it's a merit. I'm going to get, I'm, I'm, it's a merit. I'm going to ask us. It's a merit. I look at it as a meritorious. Abishta didn't give us nothing that is complicated. He didn't give us stones in our life. He didn't give us challenges in our life. Abishta wanted to bring peace in our life. Wanted to be able to create an aspect of harmony. Harmony. And therefore, you have to look at the whole Yiddish guide as a harmonic situation. Harmony between the body and the soul. Harmony between each other. Harmony between us and God. Harmony. We need to look at every, every, every mitzvah. It's who created us? God. He knows exactly what's going to bring Harmony. Now look at this. We have harmony in the Jewish nation. We all do mitzvahs the same way. Better harmony between all people is that we all do mitzvahs the same way. We might have different thoughts in the mitzvahs. We might have different understanding, but we all do the mitzvah. We all do the exact same thing. So in a way, we're all the same. In that aspect of action, we're all the same. Some might be smarter. Some might be more holier. But it doesn't make a difference. Moshe Rabbeinu put on tefillin like I put on tefillin. Moshe Rabbeinu, like it says, Moshe Rabbeinu would be uh, comfortable walking into shul because he davens like, like all of us daven. Moshe Rabbeinu put on tefillin. What's a, what's a shocking statement? He put on tefillin like I put on tefillin. Because how do I know my, how do I know how to put on film? Because my Shabana told us how to put on film. So exactly the same film that I'm putting on. It's not exactly my film is not 3,000 years old. But uh, the exact fillet filling is exactly like me. So if it was a box with four portions, it's exactly what I have written in, in my film is exactly what my Shabano had written in his film. And that's the beauty, that's the unity. That brings peace, right? If everybody would do something else, if we would have a religion. That everybody did something else, you would have a rat race. Who could do it better? Who can make the most beautiful tefillin? Imagine if everybody would be able to make their own pale tefillin. We would have neon tefillin, gold tefillin, silver tefillin. You know, everybody would have another pale tefillin. No, we also we're all the exact same black box with black straps. And so to every mitzvah. So too to the beauty of every mitzvah. I would say this, George, one must never weigh one Torah mitzvah against another. The, the, the lightest mitzvah and the harshest mitzvah were given by the same shepherd, the same God. Namely, the one God who spoke to them. Therefore, each mitzvah is intercluded in all mitzvahs. It's all the same thing. Whether it's a big one, whether it's a small one, it's all God's will. It's all God's wishes. This is why one of the gates in a mitzvah exempt from another mitzvah. That's why Api Alacha. When you're busy doing one mitzvah, you don't have to do another mitzvah. You're not obligated to another mitzvah. Why? Because you're doing a mitzvah. 
Oh, but that other mitzvah might be greater. Might it make a difference. When you're busy doing a mitzvah, that mitzvah is, is the focus of the moment. You cannot do two things at once. God doesn't expect you to be Superman. He expects you to be who you are. And when you do a mitzvah, when you're involved in one mitzvah, you, you're doing that mitzvah. So the truth is, when I'm lighting the Hanukkah Menorah, in this Hanukkah Menorah is the Shabbos candles. I'm not pushing away the Shabbos candles. In this Menorah lighting is the Shabbos candle. And, it, and the proof is, I cannot light the Shabbos candle. Because right now, I cannot light the Shabbos candle. I don't have anything for the Shabbos candle. I'm actually using it for the Menorah in this law. And therefore, in the Menorah is the Shabbos candles. Even though the, the Menorah is not... A, in, in, in a reality, ultimately, the Menorah was not made for peace. But in the Menorah, since everything comes from the Torah, everything is peace. So in the Menorah, there's a concept of peace in some kind of a way. All right. Because, I'm sorry. So in the, I, I, I flipped it over. In, 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 I'm sorry. You're right. In the Shabbos scandal is the Menorah. Are you, you're listening. In the Shabbos candle is the Menorah. Because self the Menorah, the Shabbos candle is peace, but it's also a concept of light. So in the, in the I, I, you could, I could say it either way. But halacha, you cannot do both. So therefore, halacha is like the Shabbos candle, I'll finish. Grandmother was saying, one focus, you can't dance with two women. Correct. <laughs> but over here is the opposite. See, this is the opposite. You're actually, actually dancing on two women. The point over here is you're doing the two weddings. By lighting the Shabbos candle, you're doing the two weddings. Both. You're doing both. One's included the other. That's the concept also. For example, if some, and in Kippur, you have to fast. But if you have to eat, it's not like you're breaking the fast. Eating on Yom Kippur when you have to eat is, is, is keeping Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. That's as if you're fasting because you have to eat. So in the mitzvah, there's a mitzvah to eat in Koch Nefesh, where you have to eat, it becomes a mitzvah to eat. And now it's not like you, you're pushed off Yom Kippur. No, you keep Yom Kippur by the eating because now the mitzvah is to eat. It is because it's all interconnected because you're doing God's will. I'm not, not, I'm not eating to go against God. I'm eating because God wants me to eat. Because nefesh, it's life and death. I need to eat. So now when I'm eating is I'm doing God's will, which is the same thing as doing God's will as fasting. Because you can do as a human being, fast and eat at the same time. It's just not possible. I can't do those two things at one time. So now the eating is the not eating. Actually, we see that. You see that the, the Torah says, that eating on the ninth day of, of, of Tishrei is like fasting on, on, on Yom Kippur. So the, that's why we eat more on, on the ninth day of Tishrei out of Yom Kippur as we eat, we don't eat on Yom Kippur. So the Torah considers that when you don't, when you eat on the ninth day of Tishrei is like you fasted on the ninth day of Tishrei. How is that? Because the, the, the mitzvah is to eat and, and God considers the eating as if fasting. Because it's a mitzvah by the Abishta. The fasting is a mitzvah and the eating is a mitzvah. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is why one who engages in a mitzvah is exempt of another mitzvah. The meaning here is that it's considered as if we fulfilled both mitzvahs. The mitzvah that we performed and the mitzvah that we are exempted from. You got that? That's why there's a place for everything, right? When I'm supposed to learn, I learn. When I'm supposed to pray, I pray. Oh, but wait a second. Why don't I continue learning? Because when I pray now, I'm learning. I'm supposed to learn. It's, a, it's like, like I'm learning and I'm davening. It's like truth is I'm, I'm doing everything. This is because this mitzvah that we perform includes the one which we were exempted. So therefore the Rebbe says in text number five, if the purpose of the entire Torah 
which includes each mitzvah, is to bring peace in the world, it follows that no mitzvah can be said to have been succeeded by a mitzvah that brings peace. So now you have a mitzvah, that's what you just said before. Now you have a mitzvah that itself is the whole purpose is peace. Nobody can precede it. Shabbos candles is what is the most important thing. This is because the mitzvah that brings peace fulfills the very purpose of other mitzvahs too. Thus, other mitzvahs have been fulfilled, not overruled, it actually has been fulfilled. That's the beauty of the Shabbos candles. That's the beauty of, of, of women lighting Shabbos candles. You're accomplishing the entire Torah. You're accomplishing whatever the Torah wanted to accomplish you're actually doing the mitzvah what every, what, what every I think else the Torah wanted to accomplish in the world. Well, let's go to Maimonides. He brings another Maimonides. He wants to prove that, uh, that, that also in the mitzvah of the Menorah there's the concept of peace. So he says, he brings down Maimonides. Maimonides is interesting that Maimonides it gives about, explains the whole package of Hanukkah. In text number six, page 178, in the era of the second temple, the Greek kingdom issued decrees against the Jewish people, attempting to nullify their faith and forbidding them to observe the Torah and its commandments. They extended their hands against their property and their daughters. They entered the sanctuary, were havoc on it, and made the sacraments impure. The Jews suffered greatly under them. But they oppressed them greatly until the God of our ancestors had mercy upon them, delivered them from their hands and saved them. Son of the Hashmanoim, the high priest, overcame them, slew them, and saved the Jews from their hands. They appointed a king from the priests, and sovereignty returned to Israel for more than 200 years. Accordingly, sages of that generation one day in these eight days, which will begin for the 25th of Kislev, should be commemorated as days of happiness and praise to God. Candles should be lit in the evening at the entrance to the house of each of these eight nights to publicize and to reveal this miracle. What's, what's, so what's the whole concept of, uh, and it does take those, what is the whole concept of Hanukkah, freedom. Peace, that we can live free. What's the beauty of this country? We can live free. We can live in peace. We don't have to worry about somebody wanting to attack us because I'll to attack our mitzvahs. I'm not talking about anti-Semitism. There'll always be hatred. But you, you don't understand what it means. Baruch Hashem, we don't understand what it means. We never lived in Russia. We don't understand what it means that we can do, live as Jews, free. For thousands of years, Jews could not, forget about that Jews were hated. They could not do a mitzvah. They weren't allowed to do a mitzvah. So the law was, the truth is, the law was to put the menorah on the outside, right? Why don't we put the menorah on the outside? I had to go to Israel to find the menorah on the outside. Why, wouldn't, why didn't Jews put the menorah on the outside for, thousands, for hundreds and thousands of years? Why? Because it was illegal. Simply, it was illegal to, uh, to show you Yiddishkeit. They would destroy it. That was illegal. They would go to court, right? So you go to you go you go to some places in the world in the world you'll see mezuzahs you'll see I've gone to uh, Europe and, uh, and and these parts of the world Jews live and the and you couldn't find you can, you don't see the mezuzahs like in, in the, it, it, like built into the door it's hidden it's underneath the the, the, the thing right why because they put them couldn't put them in the outside not that somebody a guy might come and, and rip it off that can happen today too. You put them in the mezuzah outside your door. Somebody will come maybe and knock it off. No, them, they couldn't, you couldn't put them in the outside. You couldn't put it. The government 
will come and, 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 and condemn you. Your government will come and, and, and put you in jail and, and fine you. You don't realize. Put it on the rock and you touch the rock. I never heard that. Never heard that. Okay. But here they used to hide the mezuzahs in part of the building. Why? Because not again, anti Semitism it was partially illegal. So now, Baruch Hashem, I'm, I don't know why in America they didn't establish it, but in, in Israel, you go to Israel, you'll see menorahs outside. On, out, outside uh, they like the menorah. We on the outside, outside their house. Uh, all the menorahs are in boxes and they light it outside. Yeah. It's in boxes and they light it outside. Baruch Hashem. So that's where you need to light the menorah, really. So, so why? Because we got out of it, we got it, we got it in a way taken away from us for many years that we could not light the menorah. It was not, it was illegal. It was illegal to, 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 to have, you know, to live. A, 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 a true Jewish life. Baruch Hashem, we left that situation. Why? Baruch Hashem, today we are free. We're free people. And Baruch Hashem, not only in America, but Baruch Hashem throughout the world. Jews are free. Jews can live and, and celebrate and do Torah and Mitzvahs, Baruch Hashem, every place in the world. And even in Iran. Yeah, even in Iran. Anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. And that's beauty. Baruch Hashem, we, we've elevated ourselves. We are, we are, we are with, we are in a way in peace. With the Abish still, we're in peace. We have to live in peace with them. But we have the capability today that we never, that we haven't had in thousands of years. Jews in China, there's no Jews in China. Now there's business people in China. There's the Chabad in China. North Korea, but I don't think there's no any Jews in North Korea. So, uh, but uh, everywhere, there's, everywhere Jews can live in 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 in, in freedom. In freedom. That, that's the reality. That's the problem. The truth is, as the Gemara says, brings down Rashi. With the world, we mentioned this last week. That's the beauty of Shabbos. Shabbos is also the concept of peace, right? We to learn right. We're a whole week. Most of us are busy running, and it's a rat race. And then the Abishta gave us peace. Well, Shabbos ba menucha. Shabbos came, and peace came to the world. That's what we say. We mentioned this last year, last week. Goes in text number seven. What was the world lacking? Rest. When Shabbos arrived, rest arrived. Thus, the work was completely unfinished. So that's why Shabbos. Is connected also to peace. So the Rebbe says in text number eight, for all these reasons, when it comes to the question of whatever to light Shabbos candles or Hanukkah candles, the Hanukkah law themselves instruct us to light Shabbos candles. Lighting up the home brings peace in the home. This means that in this instance, the Shabbos candle accomplishes the purpose and the concept of peace, the focus of Hanukkah. More than Hanukkah candles. The natural conclusion is therefore to light the Shabbos candles. The proof is, text number nine, we present as a proof the fact that Amman presents this, a fact that God's name is blotted out to restore peace between a husband and a wife. Peace is not just important enough to justify blotting out God's name. It's so important that we write God's name in the first place only to be blotted out and thus restore peace between husband and wife. You don't go and find a book that has God's name on it and take that and, and erase it. No, you write God's name. Erase it. Isn't that amazing? You would think, go and find someplace that God's name is written on a piece of paper. Take that piece of paper, put it into the water and erase it. No, you're actually writing God's name to erase it. The Abishta wants to underline, God wants to underline that it's worth it for the concept of peace. I am the concept of peace. So therefore, it's worth it for me to be erased for the concept of peace because I am peace. 
So therefore, what's greater than peace? The Satan, the Satan, the law of a Sota. It's laid right in the Torah. The Torah says of a woman and a man is infidelity. And we're, we're struggling if there was or not. So you come to the base of Mikdash and they would write God's name on it. And then we do it in the water and she drank the water. It's the laws of sight. So, uh, so over there, the Torah says the Kayan would write God's name on, on a piece of parchment and he would put it into the water and they would raise it to God's name. Yes. So, and she drank the water. If she didn't sin, she would have children, etc. So actually, the Gemara says, Nobody, there was never, never happened in history such a story. There was never a Saita. The Taylor writes, actually, the law really teaches what a relationship is. <laughs> What's the beauty of a relationship? Not only between uh, husband and wife, but between man and, and man and humanity. Because, because when, there's, when there's peace between a husband and wife, there's peace between God and the world. So, uh, Therefore, God in essence says, it's worth it for me. Not that you should go find a, a, a God's name written on a paper. I want you to write God's name right now for the sake of erasing it. Thank you for your confession. So it's important. It says a Chana, Chana threatened God. Chana, who was begging for a child. The Gemara says, Chana threatened God. I'm going to do the sota. And you're going to make me drink the water, and then I'll, have, then I'll force you. Then you'll force. Then it'll force upon upon you to, that you're going to promise me a child. Whatever. <laughs> separate, separate issue. This means that the mitzvah of writing God's name with all its inherent sanctity and intensity is only realized and manifested when it's blotted out to restore peace. Understand that you got the word. That's a deep word. David says, you know what? You are going to write this name of God, which is going to bring about sanctity in the world. But it's all worth to bring sanctity into the world to be blotted out for the sake of, sake of peace. How great is peace? How great is the concept of peace? How many wars have been born in the name of God? It's not the name of God. It was the name of oh, selfishness. Yeah. It's totally with selfish people. They abused God. Because God is peace. God is the opposite of war. Well, what is peace? What is peace? If you think about it, what is peace? Is many more than that. Have is yours, I have is mine. It's not peace. Well, it is. That's not maybe. peace. That's not true peace. That's not true peace. True peace is that we're here for each other. That's that's true peace. If we cannot come to that level that we are here for each other then you don't have peace. I mean, you have peace. You have peace out yeah. of might, peace out of separation, peace out of uh, you, yours, is, yours and mine is mine. That's not true peace. That's basically saying we don't like each other and we don't want to be with each other. That's not true peace. We need to first understand why there's strife. To understand peace. Why is there strife? Why is there struggles between people? Ego, why is there ego? Why is there ego? Why is there ego? The truth is, that's the way God, humanity wants to, is there should be ego, self-worth. Why is there strife between one another? The Torah says, because no God, where there's no God, there's gonna be, always be strife. Because two entities, can never come together. Two physical entities cannot unite. It's impossible. It's impossible to unite two physical entities. So therefore, how can there be unity when it's impossible? 
that two physical entities to become one. The only way you can do that is if you put God in the middle. God says, you're really one. Godliness says you're really one. You're not two physical entities. You might be two physical entities in the physical world, but in truth, you're all one. So you're not a competition. You're not just two entities that need to live with each other. You're really one. You're really one. There's only one humanity. There's no different races. There's one human race. It's created by God. So you might think you're Russian and you're Ukraine and you're American. Well, well we cannot think like each other. We're Americans. They're Russians. We, 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 we just can't get along. You're part of the same human race. God is the one who created you all to be Russians and to be Americans and to be Europeans and to be, if you wanted to make one country, then the whole world will be one country. No, you want the different countries and different nationalities and different ways of life and different languages. Then he said, put me in the middle. <laughs> Put me in the center and realize that I'm the one who created one humanity. I created one, one entity. I'm talking about Jews even. I'm talking about the world. There's one human race that God created. <laughs> because we don't put God. It is a lot of that. Let's look at the Rebbe. We'll, let's look at the Rebbe and then we'll come to this. Ready? This beautiful, this brute physical world is the lowest. There's none lower in terms of concealment of divine light and in terms of doubled and redoubled spiritual darkness. So much so that it's filled with unholy and unclean forces that are absolutely opposed to God saying, I am there and nothing else is besides me. The true and complete meaning of peace is not just that the conflict ceases and peace emerges. Rather, it's a creation of an environment in which the very notion of opposition is simply impossible. This means that it becomes clear to us that another's existence doesn't oppose and is not even part from my existence. We are all part of one existence. It's true peace. And it's not Lala Land. And that's why until Mashiach comes, we're going to have struggles in the world. Baruch Hashem, we've gotten better. But there's going to be struggles in the world. You're going to have a situation what you're having through right now. You can say you can blame it on one man. It's not true. It's, it's, it's a whole country. One man cannot do anything. He cannot, uh, there's other people that are involved, et cetera, et cetera. Always try to blame it on one person. Not the one. What? Not one. There's a oneness in this world. There is a oneness in this world. That's the truth. The truth is, like I said, there's one humanity in this world. We're all human beings in this world. We're not here to challenge each other. We're not here to outrun each other. We're here to enhance each other. We're here to uplift one another, to help one another. Don't we do that in the world? We do that in the world. We help, help other countries help other countries. That's the beauty. You don't say, oh, you, you, had, a, you had a hurricane, you had a thing, go. You know, you'll figure it out. No, we're there to help, right? And that's the beauty of the world. We're here to help one another, even though we are different people, even though we're different nationalities, even though we have different ways of life. What is one thing to do with the other? We don't have to be like one another. We need to be peace with one another. We need to realize we're here to help one another. Not only we're here to live, 
to survive. That's not peace. Oh, we'll survive with one another. Oh, we will respect one another. No, we had to realize we are in this world as one. We need to help one another. Your success is my success. My success is your success. Because there's ego. Because God is not here. That's it. In Torah, it's because God's not here. Because it's selfishness. We think we're here in the world. What is my, what is about me? You're, you're attacking me. You're taking over what's mine. I'm taking, I need to protect mine. It's not mine. It's not yours. It's what the Abishta gave us. And we need to respect one another. We need to be uplifting to one another. We don't need to be one another. Yeah, a lot of, not only Israel, America helps everybody, and England helps everybody, and a lot of countries help everybody. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. That's a way on the world to help each other. Not to sit back and say, it's your problem. It's our problem. That's peace. When, when the world comes together and says, we have a problem, not you have a problem, but we have a problem, then you have true peace. Zonnefeld, they say the story of him. He brought his wife to the to the to the doctor, and he told her, he told the doctor, my foot is hurting. So the doctor said, okay, let's show your foot. He said, not, I didn't mean my foot, I meant my wife's foot. So he said, your foot is hurting. He said, my wife's foot is hurting, and my foot is hurting. <laughs> Al Tadeba was freed from the, from prison. Was thrown into into prison because of other Jews, right? It was not only it was the other Jews who. who the Alter Rebbe writes a letter, a famous letter. He writes that we should be humble, and you know what? Will, what will happen with humility? Maybe the those who are against us will also be inspired. That the others that are against us gave us so much pain and suffering. They should have a downfall. They should be. Uh, uh, you know, no, maybe they will be inspired. If we're going to come out in anger, so you do, no, show humility, show that this was a this was a this was a a godly reality. The Baruch Hashem, maybe maybe they will be inspired. That's, that's that is the concept of not that they say, well, you know what, we won, you get out of here, you know, we won, you know, let's put you down. No, maybe they will be inspired. I want, I want these people to be inspired. If I'm inspired, I want them to be inspired. That's humility. That your enemy becomes you. Not that you, you not, not that this peace. You go your way, I go my way. No, I want my enemy to, to become part of me. I want your enemy to, to, to feel like I am I'm inspired. Oh, Was Asa was not Jacob felt that Asa was not ready for that. That's a, that was a, there's a whole argument in the, in Jewish philosophy if he should have done that, maybe he shouldn't have done that, maybe he should have brought Asa to him. There an argument that he should have led Dina right, correct. So it's an argument. This is, this is an argument in Jewish philosophy. Well, did he do right? Or didn't he do right? Maybe he should have embraced him. Maybe he should have said, "Come, let's go together." For whatever reason, Jacob felt. It's not happening this present time. It's good to be the Monday morning quarterback, as they say. You know, uh, Jacob felt it was not the right situation. Maybe he should have, maybe should have, maybe, maybe should have done the other way. I don't know. But we're not here to judge it, right? Because it's easy to judge somebody later. But you're right. So instead of walking away from somebody, that's not peace. Oh, I have peace. I've walked away from somebody. Yeah, peace. Meanwhile, you have still hatred. You got, but every person has to do what they can do. That's it. Every person out there, but I'm just giving you an analogy out there. Out there, said, "Let's go party and let's start." That, that. No, let's be show humility. Let us do the opposite of showing to our enemy who gave it aside. We're going to sh- and those Jews. I'm going to show victory. No, I'm going to show humility, and maybe that will inspire the other person. And uh, if I'm looking for. I'm not giving, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not 
I gave you an example of the Alter Rebbe. I didn't give example of the Israeli and the Arab conflict. I'm not giving you a general concept, but ultimately, ultimately, let me ask you a question. Ultimately, no, right now you got to show with might. Because that's, an, I'm not arguing with you that way. Now you have to show with might, but it's not true peace. And that's why it's not true peace. Okay? So you can have, you're going to have might, and you'll have to have wars and wars and wars. But you have no choice. I'm not arguing. Sometimes you have to have a war. Nobody's arguing with that point. But is that true peace? We're looking for true peace. And true peace will come when the nations of the world will, not just that we will tolerate each other, not only that the Jews and the Arabs will thus tolerate each other, but that the Jews and the Arabs will live in peace. And they will enhance our lives and will enhance their lives. Mm-hmm. And that's it, that's it. So you're right. Right now, you cannot do that. So you have to fight a war. You got you to gotta, you gotta, you gotta have might. Israel's not going to have might. Like, like Golda Meir said, when they'll put their guns down, we'll put our guns down. So we cannot do that. I'm not arguing with that. But is that the therefore we're not in true peace? Therefore we're not we're not in true peace. And that's it. But it's not peace yet. We're not at the peace we're looking for, right? So you so you we're at peace. You know we're strong. Israel's strong, but Hashem they need to be strong because they're living in a rough neighborhood. But uh, that's that's wonderful, and that's why there's peace a little bit. Because you got a strong army, but uh, that's why you have to pay not eighty percent of your GBD it has to be uh, it has to be going on on the military. We, we, I always go to Israel, and uh, I always say, "Wow, how beautiful this country would be! How beautiful this country is! How beautiful it would be if there would talk be peace in this country! How beautiful it would be! It would be <laughs> it would be unbelievably beautiful, right? It's beautiful the way it is." But ultimately, you have to get every place you go, you got to be checked, and there's guns all over the place, and there's soldiers all over. Baruch Hashem, right now, thank God, you see a soldier, you say thank you, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh uh, we say in Davini, uh, just like God makes peace in the heavens, brings about peace in, in the upper world, God should bring peace, we should learn to bring peace in this world. We need to bring peace. Uh, until we have peace, we're in Gullus. And we need to ultimately realize that we need peace. And peace is not that, like the Rebbe would say, peace is not that I want that all the, the Arabs should be dead. That's not, the, that's not peace. That's not peace. Peace is that ultimately people live, and it so belongs to the Jewish nation. The Arabs can have 22 other countries. Gesundheit, hate. I'm not interested in the 22 other countries. Israel should have its country. Everybody should have their country. And, and, I, and, and you would fight for that for other people that should have their country. That's not peace either. You're right. When all, the, when all the world will say, you know what? The Jews should live in peace and we're going to enhance each other. We're going to help each other. We're going we're gonna, to... We're gonna, even the peace arrangements they have, uh, Jews have with, the, with, the, with other countries, it's... Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a very strained peace. It's so hanging on our things, and there's so many things that the Jews have to do to keep this this peace going. Okay, that's not peace. That's not true peace. They really hate each other, and uh, that peace. We're not looking for that kind of peace. Selfish. I'm happy. We happy. Happy. Whatever you get, you know. Like I always say, go to the Kotel. Kotel. I'm I actually want to tell you people that amid Shemlin. Somebody's giving me a trip to Israel next week, so I'm going to be, uh, I got a gift, uh, my wife and I, so uh, that's it. So, uh, so uh, you, you go to Israel, and you go to the, everybody wants to, everybody wants to go to the Kotel, everybody wants to go to the Kotel, right? They want to go to the Kotel, so you go to the Kotel. So we have a Kotel, a little wall over there, this is what we're happy about. This is what we're happy about, a wall. We're by a wall. <laughs> the base of Big Dutch is, uh, we're happy with a wall. This is uh, Jews. We're happy with a wall. We got a wall. We got a wall. Oh, we're all dancing. We're happy. We're all dancing. We're happy with all. Oh, come on, give me a break. This is what I'm happy. Okay, I'm happy, but this is the true joy. Uh, I'm at the Kaiso. This is a, this is a, this, uh, it's behind the Kaiso that you have to uh, you be happy with. This is the, but we came happy. That's the Jews. Oh, I'm satisfied. Very good. We got the wall. Okay. We do. 
The wall is the wall. Hey, whatever the wall is a great wall. I'm not, don't don't uh, don't uh, don't. I'm not taking it away. But uh, this is, but this is I know. But this is only the this is not, this is not a, what is it? It's one percent of the 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 hundred percent that you're looking for. To have true peace, we cannot be satisfied with small pieces, and peace out of strength is not true peace. It's peace, but it's not true peace. It's not a true peace. Because the second other guy gets stronger, you have a problem. Or you get weaker, you got a problem. So it's not true peace. That's a problem. You'll always have to be stronger. It's not a problem. It's not a true peace. So the true, complete, that's what the Rebbe says. That the true peace is that we feel that we're, it, our existence is the other person's existence. I don't want the I don't want the unexistence of the other person. I don't want the other person to feel afraid. I don't want the other person to feel. Uh, I want the other person to live with me in total units in total existence. That's true peace. And thus, the Rebbe right. This is a deeper meaning of saying the Torah was given to bring peace to the world. To reveal that the world and all therein is really the Torah and the inherent part of God. It's the world's nature to conceal divine light. Godliness is not, is not openly vis visible in the world. On the contrary, the world appears to be separate from God to the extent that it's possible to assume not only that the world is not an extension of God, but it doesn't really depend on God for its existence. It's possible to assume that this place has no master. This palace has no master. That God gave us the title to bring peace to the world means that the Torah makes peace between the world and God, as it were. The Torah enables us to recognize and, in, and intuit that the universe is not in conflict with God, nor does it conceal Godliness. That the universe depends constantly on God for its existence. Most importantly, that creation is merely an extension of the Creator. And that's the most important lesson, right? Merely, merely, thank you. Merely, not merely. Merely, 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 merely. 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 Okay, what do you want from my life? English is not my uh, language. So uh, it's an extension of the creator. That's that's what it is. That's what it's. So if the, imagine if the world would realize that we are all, every, the whole world is an extension of God. We're all one grace. We're all an extension of God. Each one doing what it's supposed to do. The Jewish people doing what it's supposed to do. The nations of the world doing what it's supposed to do. Everybody's doing what it's supposed to do. Everybody is equal, created by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It doesn't make a difference what nationality you're in, what world, what, there's enough room in this world for everybody to exist. God didn't bring down people in this world and said there's not enough world, not a day, but you know, we say every day in, in the, in the, when, we, when we thank God for our food, we said, God gives food for everybody in the world. There's enough food for everybody. It doesn't make a difference how many people there's gonna be in the world. There's enough food for everybody in the world. If only, if only humans would not get involved and, and keep people from, 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 from eating in the world. The Abishta gives enough food and God gives enough food in the world. God gives enough space in the world. God gives enough business. And the Abishta gives every person his worth and every person is, is, is greatness. And every, every person, the 7 billion people, 8 billion. 8 billion people, God gives the capability and the potential and the health and the, and the wealth and the, uh, to 8 billion people. Enormous project, but Baruch Hashem, he does it without any help. He does it, he does it with kindness and with mercy. And God loves everybody. And we should realize that and we should bring peace between one another. And that's why the most important thing that women can do on that of Shabbos is to light the Shabbos candles, to bring light of peace in the world. And maybe their one candle will bring light and peace in the world and change this world and teach the world that it's more important peace than the menorah. It's more important peace than the God's name. It's more important peace 
than anything else in the world because that is true God. We know the God's, the, the God's name is Shalom. God's name is peace. So let us hope that through this uh, Hanukkah and the mission this coming Shabbos will bring peace in the world and there'll be peace in the world and there'll be the ultimate peace uh, in the building of the base of Mikdash and the coming of Mashiach b'mehera b'yameinu mamish. I wish you all a happy Hanukkah and a wonderful, wonderful week.